You've connected to an IP camera, and so you're halfway there. Now you've got to set it up for its long-term use. When you're doing that, the first important step is getting the long-term or the permanent IP addressing set up. Now, the simple way to do that is you can pull up a web interface, and there's usually a section under the setup or configuration called network or networking, and you can put in IP address information. If you're a more advanced user, you can use a camera management tool. And rather than go to the web interface of each camera, you can basically go in a single place and you can assign IP addresses one after the other. So if you're dealing with lots of cameras, you're going to want to use more advanced tools. For now, to get started, we're just going to show you the web interfaces. So you put in the IP address, whatever it is, you go to it, you go to the section for networking, and now we're going to set the IP address. When you're setting IP addresses, you have a choice, and you'll see basically how it's explained here two radio buttons, either obtain an IP address automatically, DHCP, or use the following IP address and you put your own IP address in. We strongly recommend that you assign a static IP address and do not use DHCP. Here's the issue. If you use DHCP, the IP address can change over time. So let's say today is Monday and I basically the computer or the server assigns the camera an IP address of let's just say 200. And then three days later, the computer or the server assigns the IP camera an IP address of 220. Now, you may say to yourself, well, what does it matter? It was 200 then, it's 220 now, no big deal. The big deal is that the VMS system is expecting the camera to be at a certain IP address. When you configure a camera on a VMS system, you're going to tell it what its IP address is. So, for instance, this camera here is at dot .104. If this camera tomorrow goes to dot .204, this VMS system will stop recording it. This also VMS system will stop displaying it. So your operators will come in one day and they'll be like, oh, no more video all because you put it on dynamic. So bottom line, except if you're an advanced user, stick it on static is generally the best accepted practice in the industry. Now, once you go for a static IP address, you're going to put in three key pieces of information, the IP address itself, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. The IP address is the address of the camera itself. It's the address that you want that camera to have. The subnet mask is a more advanced thing about routing. You should basically just use whatever is given to you. And the default gateway, what's one about the default gateway, is that's the gateway to the outside world. If you want to speak to other networks, you're going to have to put something incorrect. Here's what you need to do. If you're not comfortable with any of these three, uh, uh, three items, you need to be going to someone else, an IT manager, an operational manager, someone else who knows basically about the network, and just have them send you an email, and that email should say, hey, John, here's basically the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway you should be putting in. And then what you should do is you should just copy it straight in as is. The other element that you might want to use is a DNS server. Generally, you don't need a DNS server for, for using IP cameras. Those are typically the application where it's most often used. If you want to send out mail uh, from an IP camera and you want to put in like mail.ipvm.com, it will need to resolve it. Let me show you what resolving means. I go to the New York, when I go to the New York Times, I do in www.newyorktimes.com. This actually maps to an IP address. If you don't believe me, let me show it to you here for a second. I can use a little command and I can look up what the New York Times IP address is. This is the IP address of the server, 199.200. I can then go in, in my browser, and I can type in 199.239, etc., and I'm still going to get the New York Times. The same thing works for, for an IP camera when it's communicating outside. It either can connect to an IP address or use a domain name. The bottom line is don't put in a, you don't need to put in a, do, a domain name unless someone who has more expertise in the network or administrating the network for some reason wants you to, but that's generally less critical. The other element, and this is a really important element, when you put an IP address, and this is one reason why I recommend that you get it from someone who's managing the network. So you, and this is a really fundamental rule. 
make sure you're not using another IP address or an IP address that's in use. So for instance, let's say you have a camera in place and its IP address is 164. Don't go and put your new camera at 164. Or let's say your laptop is 164. Don't put the IP, uh, uh, the address of the camera at 164 because you're going to get crazy issues. It's going to be intermediately. Sometimes it connects, sometimes it doesn't. So this camera over here actually has a little tool. So for instance, we've already signed this camera to 164. If I click the test button, it's going to tell me the address is currently in use. So that's a handy way of basically saying, hey, this address is in use. You probably shouldn't use it. So we could do something else. We could do like 165 and we could click the test button and it's going to go through and it's probably pinging to try to see if there's anything connected to 165. And now it responds, say this address is not in use. Again, I still wouldn't basically assign an IP address just because it says it's not in use because you don't know what else is going on in the network, but this is at least one sanity check, test or check to make sure that you're not uh, using an IP address that's already in play or being used. So that's the fundamentals when you're looking at setting up IP cameras. The big thing is get the IP address set and correct right away. Thank you.